I'm here at the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange trying to gauge the mood of the citizens ahead of uh, the official launch of the manifesto. What are the expectations really and will these expectations uh, be met by the NDC's manifesto? So I'm going to try to speak to a few people. Uh, thank you so much um, for speaking to me. What, what really are your expectations uh, of the NDC's manifesto? NDC has nothing to give us. NDC has nothing. But since uh, there are eight years that has passed by, I, I, I've not even seen that what NDC have done that Ghanaians are happy about it. So as for me, I don't have any good expectation that NDC is bringing out to Ghanaians. But Ghanaians will be happy about their uh, manifesto. But they say they're going to... Aside from that, crime, why Okada? They have to request for something better in life more than everybody can buy Okada and hire someone to work with Okada. How Okada? He has to bring new things that people will enjoy and like it more than this Okada. They are, they are making noise in all over the place. People are uh, uh, Okada, Okada. What's Okada? Okay, if they will realize their mistakes and then correct their mistakes, I think it will be better than accusing the current, I mean, um, sitting president. And for that one, yeah, I disagree with them. You know, if you want to move forward, you correct your mistakes. So use your past to correct your current mistake, I mean, present um, life. So if I've been, um, I mean, um, I've done a lot of mistakes previously for the past, I have to sit down, work it out, and come, when I want to come to power, then I know that I've corrected my mistakes and coming forward, then I know that these are the things I have to put in place. I'm expecting them to just come back to tell us the truth, as in what they did not, or they were not able to do before. They are supposed to come and tell us, be able to also convince us that if we trust them or we believe in them, we'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to get or do whatever we want to do. They promised, especially we the youth, jobs. So we are expecting that when they come, they'll be able to give us the jobs that we need. Yes. We will compare and contrast because as of now, the two parties are, you know, telling their stories. So what we believe is we are waiting for the NDC manifesto. Then we compare and contrast. That's why I use the word in my opinion. In my opinion. And they should like uh, give more employment to uh, unemployed graduates and yeah, exactly. And to, 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 to manage the economy for, for the betterment of Ghana. Promise, but they shouldn't yeah. over stress. Uh, stress uh, the promise that they will do this thing just to gain power. They, sh they should do the right thing by telling us what they will be able to do. Ghanaians, they want to be, they want comfort. But if you promise them something you can't, you can't do, and you and you came, and 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 and, and the hardship is still going on, and they are not getting work to do, it's it's not nice. It's not nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All the best. Today. Hi, Gifty. Are you hear me and you have some people ready to share what their thoughts are with us? Let's go ahead. Well, definitely. So, I mean, and as we build up to the official launch of uh, the NDC's manifesto later tonight, in fact, a number of people have been expressing their opinions and really their expectations. Indeed, um, a lot of promises have already been thrown around with people trying to see through and pick out, you know, uh, uh, um, the real ones from the chaff. And so I'm here at Kokumleme trying to get a few people to react to um, the promises that have thus far come through. And in fact, whether or not they are looking that some of these promises are, as it were, you know, properly incorporated and uh, maybe institutionalized going into the uh, manifesto of uh, the NDC. These gentlemen are here trying to, uh, you know, uh, be busy and while away some time. I'm here to talk to them. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much uh, for agreeing to speak to us. Well, I'm sure that you might have already heard that the NDC is launching its manifesto uh, later tonight. Particularly for yourself, what, what are some of the things that you're expecting? Okay, I'm, I am expecting good things from them. But I heard when they come, they will abolish the double track system. Yeah, as for that one, I don't think it's a good promise because if we abolish the double track system, you are not a magician, so there is no way you can command schools to be at everywhere. It, it, it will take time before you can cover all the schools. It is the same thing this MBP government is doing. 
So if, if you tell me you abolish the double track system, what it means is that if you come, you abolish the free SHS. So I don't want them to go there at all. But, but, but they, they've, made, they've made a point that they are going to maintain the free SHS and then invest about 10 billion US dollars in infrastructure. That's what they call the big push, so that they get more infrastructure to be able to accommodate the students without having to do double track. That's their point. That if, if they are not going to abolish their free SHS and, and they are going to maintain, it's good. It's good. But if, if you want to do so, don't say you abolish the double track because it is. The, the, it is the numbers that brought the double track system. So, if we say you continue and doing it gradually, you get there. But if we say when you come, you abolish the double track system uh, immediately. That one, it's I see it as a deceit. So, that expectation, I'm not expecting them to. I mean, be in that. So a really critical point that you make, you talk about the uh, feasibility of abolishing a double track given the numbers that you have. You think that they are only, uh, you know, uh, building castles in the end, trying to throw dust into your eyes. That's, that's a point that you're making. I'll come to you very shortly and then talk to you also. But they make a point that they are going to embark on what they call Operation Stink. And so they'll prosecute all appointees who are, you know, tacked corrupt and are, are caught in corrupt activities. But well, they've been in power for some time. I'm sure you might have experienced uh, the John Mahama administration while he was in power. He wants to promise that he'll do better in terms of corruption. Your reaction? As for corruption, it is the same thing they said when MPP was power during Kofo regime. They accused a lot of the MPP ministers that they are corrupt. So, but when they came to power, they sent close to 15 people to court, but none of them was jailed. So I see it like Ghana here, if you want to come to power, what you have to do is to, I mean, tag people with corruption. If you, if you tag people with corruption, that will make you win election. That's why they're doing so. Because when they come, I don't think <laughs> the, the same thing will happen as it's happening during the Mel's uh, Mama uh, administration. And uh, Secondary, if we, if you want to know who is corrupt between MPP and NDC, there is no way NDC can say we have uh, MPP minister in jail as we speak now. But there are a lot of NDC ministers who has been in jail. I don't see why they why they, say why they keep on saying to talk about corruption. So you don't think that the NPP is corrupt at all? If the, if somebody if somebody is corrupt, you have to I mean come with evidence. evidence. If you don't have evidence, it's just mere talk. I'll try to come back to you. Facts mm. are established at court. In court, definitely. yeah. So if you cannot establish your fact at court, how can you say somebody is corrupt? Great. The, Great, thank okay. you. So I'll try to come back to you. Um, and then <laughs> interesting point he's making there that the NDC is unable to, uh, as it were, establish any concrete uh, you know, case of corruption against the NPP. And so for him, Operation Stink is also really just a ruse. But let me speak to this gentleman. Well, the NDC says that they're going to uh, create over one million jobs if they win power. Um, what will be your reactions to that? Um, I think um, they have said it. So sometimes we will give them the benefits of the doubt to watch what they can do. So sometimes coming to power is not in, uh, uh, in our own will. It is by the will of God. So when they come, what they have said, that is what we will expect from them. So sometimes we will hold them accountable of what they have uttered that okay this is what we will do and at the end they fail to do so sometimes you can say something but at the end you yeah, fail to do you can say something but at the end of the day you fail to do it there's a point that people make about over promising so that um because somebody wants to clinch onto power they promise heaven and earth things that are not even you know attainable within the circumstances do you sense anything you know like that in a sense of over promising so far with the things that you've heard from the NDC? Yeah, some of their promises um, are not relevant in the sense that um, in our country. Well, example, example of the irrelevant um, promises. Um, like um, build, uh, okay, let's say um, the Okada. The Okada promise doesn't make sense at all. 
because the Okada itself is not making our country nice. And the accident and let's say the life taken in it is very high. The risk is very high. So for them to legalize Okada to become part of our trans uh, uh, transport, I don't think um, is a relevant promise. Great. So he's saying that um, he doesn't think that um, the Okada promise by the NDC is relevant, well, in his own words. I'm trying to speak to a few more people um, here and get their own reactions. My boss, um, I'm sure that you've been hearing the conversation. Someone says that Okada promise is not relevant. Somebody says that they are deceiving us in terms of corruption fight and so on. What is your own expectation? Uh, to me, you know, the Mihuna say once we more power, we can we more some de de de. But we more buy power new year. New year no more ye. MPP new year this year. We more the year to move on. We are coming a day ago. We more power now. We can some de de de. We are two more movie number this year. A different thing altogether. But he makes a point that both the NDC and the NPP, as it were, dilly dally with the minds of the people, so that um, as uh, you know, they want to cling onto power, they promise heaven and earth. But when they you know get into the corridors of power, they behave just as they want. But I want to find out what that means for he as an electorate. Into say uh, uh, polit politicians no amo they are doing they are there and uh, say yes so yes so they are not more power so many because they are not voting more more. Into can vote a more more amo fire doing they are now doing say. Me to me no better cry answer no be be vote a more be no me me sure say better charge in the pan answer because. Yeah, I'm more campaign now. I'm more concerned now. But I'm only in your power now. Yeah, there was one more year my time in front now. And this ah, so to me, to me, no me, no me. Buy and buy, buy. Kakran sana be bano. We say buy kakran. We be just the answer we vote. Yes, of course. Well, he makes a point that this is something um, that will only be solved by vote buying because you need to ask it where you know secure something uh, from the politicians before you vote for them because really there's no assurance that if they win power they are going to do what they promise to do and for him he is predicting that in a not so distant future uh, citizens would request monetary you know uh, compensation before they vote for politicians i don't know what you think about that but um, the gentleman here doesn't agree at all while i was talking to him he made a point that drink crap boss because uh, politicians they they are more promising, and yeah, very soon, yes, you better see cancer now. If we tell them, uh, the entire cabin and then you are going to say, Sadi a TB a bay be bar, obey a BB, or a young fat a free SHS, you cry a bay. Mimi say, me back could be so three times now, three years now, men tria fees and eh, nine times, me tria fees and come a chair by five thousand. So, I say, by because of voter, me two yen in tea, and I'm a man, yes, are benefiting. No? Mimi say, Missika Eka, two micro finances and law, 2014 2015. But this government, a buyer, you know, says, can you do in our men's acre? It's about one day. What to are there is a benefit, but it will not go for everybody. And you don't have to say, uh, it, 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 it don't have to be a personal benefit. If you do so, then you are a selfish person. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So he makes a point that indeed, um, there are benefits really from every regime that comes through um, elections and even though some of these benefits might not be relative to every individual generally there are some benefits that come through i don't know what you think but they've been reacting to um the ndc's yet to be launched manifesto and picking out a few of the things therein and, and, and sharing their thoughts on that and so as we build up uh, to the official launch of the NDC's manifesto uh, from Kokumlemle here in Accra. Uh, my name is Manuel Kranti Gifty. Uh, over to you. Because <laughs> Brana, Papa, me young Fantin, pardon me, young Fantin, me young Fantin, at Amaris in the Banami. I am used to proud with my at Amaris in the Minimum. Yes, so, ma'am, I will include because now we are lack of so many things in our villages. Bra at Amaris Bayano, but 
Hashtag <laughs> 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 <la
and yet go up a and you move to fear now. So better than Colada Cola and your Mary Wadi. As old Chay Adipa, cause I'm Mary Mary or no. I heard of our Cago family reclass. I'm going to enter Bianca. The Cofami Reson Sodia and your papa. 